Hello everyone, Pat Beckdonough here, and I'm um, just answering a few questions. Hi Pat, my name is Dara Delaney. They say entrepreneurs are risk takers. I'm wondering, did you take many risks when starting out? And if so, were those risks hard to take? Thanks. Well Dara, I suppose there's always risk in business. There's uh, plenty of risks um, in what you do and I suppose uh, but anything you do uh, in in whether it's in business or in life there's a, always going to be a certain amount of risk attached to it and uh, I, I suppose the, the answer to the question in relation to uh, taking risks is you have to take calculated risks you see use a bit of common sense um, and circumstances um, will often interfere with that. But if you are determined, if you're focused and if you're driven to attain whatever you want to attain, then, you know, you'll always come out on the uh, on the right side of it. But of course, it was a, there's, there's plenty of risk um, because uh, that's where the challenge is, but that's where the opportunity is as well. And risks are, are common in, in business as they're common in life. You have to take a certain amount of risk, otherwise you'll stay static. Hi Pat, my name is Kate Moran and my question is, how did you come up with the name Supermax? Supermax came about by, uh, when I was in secondary school in Moat, it was a boarding school in Westmead at the time. And we used to play a good bit of football, Gaelic football there at the time. And by uh, one of my better games, one of the guys on the sideline, Christmas Super Mac. So that was the natural progression then when I got into the fast food business and uh, using the name uh, Super Mac was, was the natural name for to, to use in the, business, in the business. Hi Pat, my name is Ailish. I was just wondering what kind of like inspired you to open Super Max? Nothing inspired me. It was a case of do or die. Um, because we'd opened a pool hall and the planners didn't like it so we had to, to close it again and uh, then looked around the town to see what was necessary and uh, I suppose it was either going to be a nightclub or a pool hall and the, the reason it wasn't a nightclub was that I hadn't got the money for it um, and it was costing quite a bit to fit it out uh, so uh, it ended up as I say a pool hall and uh, again hadn't got an awful lot of money so I had to big steal and borrow for um, for to set it up and the guy we had uh, as the maintenance man in Kilrickle school where I thought at the time uh, when we opened or before we opened he was the carpenter the plumber the tiler and the painter and the day we opened he was down the back peeling potatoes and chipping chips so as I say it was on a budget and, and anyone that, that um, owed me a favour, that favour was called in. So, um, uh, but that was uh, the reason that we opened Supermax at the time because we hadn't, uh, we didn't get the, the pool hall as I thought we would and I had to look around and see what, was, what else was needed. Hi Pat, my name is Neve. At what stage do you realise that you're going to have to expand your company and open up in other parts of the country? Pretty early, actually, when we got the, the first restaurant open there in Banasso and got to know what we were doing. And um, initially, as I say, we employed a, a chef from Hayden's Hotel at the time, and he taught us all there was to know, or we needed to know about um, about the catering side of things. So um, uh, it wasn't too long afterwards when he thought, yeah, this is something you could do elsewhere. So. Uh, it was, I think it was about a year and a half, two years later, we opened in Gort and then opened in Galway after that. My name is Michael Fallon and my question is, what advice would you give a person starting out as an entrepreneur and who did you get advice from? Thanks, Pat. Michael, I didn't get any advice really from anyone. I just kind of learnt as I went and uh, I had worked in various jobs and that's what gives you a lot of experience. I worked in uh, Bournemouth, I worked with a local farmer, 
I worked in Butlin's holiday camp, which was a holiday camp then, uh, in Mosley and Mead. I worked in England with another uh, Butlin's um, holiday camp, and I worked in America um, uh, on a ship. So any job or any experience you can get is good. And a lot of the experiences you get aren't necessarily from the school you're in that you get it. You need to get experience of dealing with people, of learning to work with people, and uh, learning to kind of um, uh, lear learn to handle different situations. So, uh, as I say, when when uh, when I opened, common sense is the biggest thing that you need in business and in life generally. And like, common sense isn't too common, as we say. So, a bit of street smarts as, as well in dealing what, with customers and with staff, etc. That's really what you have to learn. And if you, or there's a will, there's a way. If you want to do something bad, badly enough, then you'll do it. Uh, hi, Pat. My name's Luke Lohan, and my favourite meal in Supermax probably be the chicken wrap meal. Uh, what's your favourite meal? My favourite meal at the moment is... Um, either the five ounce burger or the chicken breast sandwich. And both of them are very good products. And uh, as I say, they're going selling very well for us. In actual fact, I think between the two of them, they make up um, probably about 45% of our, our sales. Hi, my name is Emma Hossie and I'm wondering how you decide on the price for your product slash service. Emma, I suppose you decided based on what it costs you to purchase the product, what it costs you to, um, obviously to, 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 to make it, uh, and what and, and the labor that's attached, and then the overheads. So you, you base your price on, on your overheads, the cost of the product, and the labor, and you add your on your percentage, whatever you might add on to for that. Hi Pat, my name is Brian and I was just wondering what were your skills and characteristics of when you first started your business? It's so long ago I can't hardly think back. But anyway, uh, I would say, um, I suppose, tenacity, never say no because you were turned down in the previous business you were looking to set up and um, you didn't know an awful lot of about the catering industry but learned a good bit as you went. Um, perseverance, I would say, is another one. Um, a willpower and a dedication, trying to satisfy the customer. I would say that's 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 the answer to that. Hi, Pat. My name is Natasha. What has been your proudest or most satisfying moment in business to date? And is there any particular moment that stands out to you the most? I think, yeah, I think uh, when we opened uh, our first restaurant in Benleslow, I think that was a proud moment. Um, I think when we opened in Air Square Galway, that was a proud moment. Uh, Connor Street in Dublin was good. And uh, obviously there's a lot of proud moments. Um, uh, and it's, uh, I suppose it's hard to pick out one over the other. Uh, but when you see that your business is going well, and uh, I think that's that's uh, I don't dwell on it too much. I don't dwell on kind of the self praise aspect of it too much. But um, uh, it's it's kind of seeing satisfied customers. I suppose that's the proudest moment uh, that are kind of going away satisfied, and you know that they're going to come back to you uh, as opposed to go somewhere else. Hi, Pat. My name is Rachel. And I was wondering, what is the best part about being your own boss? Are there any disadvantages? Well, the best part about being your own boss, I suppose, is being your own boss. Uh, you can decide um, what to do or what not to do. And I suppose um, if you take it seriously, it won't work for any anyone tougher than yourself. So. Being your own boss is a difficult one because you won't work for anyone harder. 
Um, and I relate into the first year in business, I'd say I had two days off in the whole year um, because that's what the business needed. You had to be, you have to really love whatever you're at. And if you don't, you get out of it and you get into something that you really like because otherwise you're never going to be successful at it. So you really need to, it doesn't matter what job you're in, to like it, to love it, and then you'll make a success of it because work isn't really work. Work is enjoyment. Now there's always going to be days that things go wrong and there won't be enjoyment. But if you, if you find that those days are every day, then it's time to get out and move on to something else that you can enjoy. Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm wondering what motivates you to keep expanding and diversifying your business? Well, Sarah, I suppose what motivates you is uh, um, you have to keep, uh, keep expanding. There's no such thing as going backwards. If you're going backwards, you're going backwards and you're going to lose ground. Um, and eventually things kind of unwind. So in order to stay, you have to cons consis consistently grow um, and come up with new ideas and come up with different ideas and come up with new products and come up with new innovations because uh, that's just the way it is. If you don't, somebody else is always biting to get to take your piece of ground or whatever your product or to 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 copy or whatever. Um, they're they're vying for your customer, so you're always constantly trying to keep ahead of the posse, and um, um, diversification is part of that. Like uh, you know, in the, in the in the not too distant past, our job was to kind of come up with products, whether it was pizza whether it was the fresh uh, fresh meat burger, uh, fresh chicken sandwich, um, that was going to kind of take you to the next level. And um, that's what you did. But you also have to come up with new ideas. You also have to come up with, you know, the plaza type idea where your customer base is changing and it's going to change again after this COVID situation because, you know, the nightlife isn't going to be like what it was up to now. and. 20 years ago, our night business was 70% of the business. Nowadays, it's probably 30% of the business, and less, well, obviously with the COVID, it's, 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 it's pretty much uh, 0%. But uh, uh, it's, so times are changing, so, and, and the, the business is changing, the customers is changing, but you have to keep the customer interested. So what I suppose what I'd say is that, um, it's constant change and constant uh, and it's constantly everything is constantly changing uh, so the whole like I mean 20 years ago there was no such thing as a mobile phone and in another 20 years time there will be some invention that we didn't even dream of um, so it, your customers are constantly evolving they're, they're coming through from obviously kids in national school, secondary school, and then they're evolving. The next thing is they're becoming parents themselves. So you have to try and keep that customer uh, growing with you as they evolve and as you grow your business. So that's where diversification comes. Um, and, you know, it's enjoyment as well. If you enjoy what you're doing, if you're really, um, liking it or loving it or whatever. Don't want to use that phrase too much because I think some other company uses that. But anyway, if you like what you're doing, um, you'll always be looking for new ideas, looking for what, what's going to work here, what's not going to work. Uh, you know, is this site good? Is, is it a better site? Looking for people to, to, to come and work with you, etc. So it's all a process, but it's an enjoyable process. Whatever you do and you're in first year now, I think, in secondary school. So whatever you do, um, make sure you enjoy it. And even in, in, in secondary school, now is the time to dream. Now is the time to, to take time out and see what you want to do and see what, where where you want to be and what you want to do down the line, etc. Whether you want to go to university, whether you want to, 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 um, 
take up a, a job, do an apprenticeship, whether you want to do uh, something else totally different, whether you want to immigrate, whether you want to be a, a whatever a politician or whatever you want to be, you want to make sure you you enjoy it and make sure that uh, you take time to dream about these things while you have time to dream. Um, so I suppose uh, it's a great time, it's a great time to be alive. It's a great time, great time in the world. This COVID will pass and uh, uh, things will improve. And when, it, when they do, that's when the opportunity arises. So listen, thanks for listening and I wish you the best.